you are turned on to Midwest Outdoors magazine. Since 1967, helping people enjoy the outdoors. Sponsored in part by Rapala Lures, Shakespeare Ugly Stick, America's strongest, most sensitive rod, Northwest Ontario, Canada, Abu Garcia, quality rods and reels for life. This week on Midwest Outdoors, pan fishing with the Chena Bay crew in Wisconsin, spring bass action with John Andrew, and big bobber walleye from Arneson's Reef on Lake of the Woods. All this and more starting right now. It's a bluegill. Another one. Oh, it's a decent one. That's what we're after. Nice gill. Hi, folks. I'm Justin Cohn with All Seasons Adventures Guide Service. And today on Midwest Outdoors, we're fishing with Tom Shire, the owner of Southway Bait Sales. And we're using one of his products, the amazing Chena Bait, to catch a mixture of bluegill, perch, crappie, just whatever we can get into on beautiful Big Green Lake. That's a great eating sized bluegill right there. We're lucky we'll have a fish fry at the end of the day, right, Tom? Yes, sir. Sounds good. Ooh, feels good. Tom, all I did was hook the sliver of that Chena Bait on there, just like you showed us and immediately caught a nice keeper sized bluegill. Beautiful color out of Green Lake. These fish just got done spawning. They were up shallower last week and uh, now they're suspended out over 20, 30 feet of water. They're halfway down. So just rigging it up with a real light presentation, that chena bait fluttering down, they're coming right up and eating it. Chena bait on a black ant on this one. Justin was showing us he was using a plain hook. I've been using a couple different hooks. We use the Haley's, but now I went to a black ant and it's working just as well. It seems like this chena bait works better after you catch a few fish. It loosens up, it softens up, and they just keep on eating it. I haven't switched baits for about seven fish yet. And I'm gonna change right now because they're chewing on my little tail and I ain't catching them. So I think the scent has gone away, so we're gonna put a new piece on. It seems like they're changing attitudes throughout the day. We got clouds, wind, sun. Caught some fish in 10 feet of water. We've caught some fish in 30 feet of water. So I guess we'll keep switching it up and whatever they want, we'll rig it how they want to eat it. That feels like a good one. So they slowed down in there. It got real cloudy. We just moved out a little deeper. And it's a real, real steep ledge here and they're just suspended right off the edge of that ledge. They just came out from their spawning area and they're just suspended halfway down, 20 to 30 feet of water, casting out the 40 and just letting that chena bait swing right over the top of them and through them. That's a swarm of fish right there. If the boat was actually moving forward, we're just anchored on them right now with the iPilot. But uh, if there was, uh, if, if the boat was moving forward, you'd see perfect little marks from the fish. So it looks like a cloud when you're sitting on top of them. But then you can watch the side scan when you're fishing the suspended fish out here. You look off to the right side, all those little streaks are fish. So obviously you want to cast off the right side of the boat right now. The left side doesn't have much besides weeds. And the right side has, you know, the drop off and those little marks are all fish suspended halfway between the boat and the bottom. And we, and fishing here with Justin, we even have some rock bass out here on these drop offs. Justin and I have had an opportunity to fish together for quite a few years. Oh, three poles. <laughs> <laughs> and we got fish coming in all the time. All sizes, lots of sorting. But that's the nice part about chena bait. It lasts for a lot of fish. You can just keep on using it. You know, and obviously the bigger fish will keep and the little ones we're gonna let go. And a lot of people have used the chena bait because it has been out for 50 years, but they used it for ice fishing only. Well, we're showing you now that this open water fishing is actually more dominant than the ice fishing, but it does work as well as in the winter time. Yeah, the cool part is it's just such a small piece too. And when it gets in the water, I see what you're saying, it kind of swells up and it just flutters and just looks so good. Panfish love it, that's all I can say. And the small piece that Justin has on his finger will allow you to catch 25 fish. The product comes in an inch by three roll, but what's recommended is cutting six pieces just prior to going so you don't have to handle the scissors right. as you're fishing. So this is what you're gonna get right out of the package. It's rolled up, 
three inches long, inch wide, you can literally cut probably a hundred slivers out of that roll and, and you'd have a lot of bait to catch a lot of fish. Dropping it down to the bottom, just swung over the edge here, about 15 feet of water, I'm marking a lot of fish just right off the slope. Seems like you just get that chino bait down there and hold it and uh, eat it right up. You know, bluegill are a popular fish to jig for in the wintertime. Everybody goes ice fishing for them, but they're still good eating, so don't forget about the bluegills in the summer. Perfect example of catching fish one after another. I've got a Haley's jig, and Justin has the black ant. We just switched. I put a tiny piece of chino bait, like we cut up there in the package, and uh, just tipped it on that black ant fly, and it didn't get halfway down, and the bluegill ate it immediately on that slow drop. Another bluegill. The wind is picking up. But they're still biting. So Justin's got one hooked too. Oh, we must have switched places, Tom. <laughs> I got the rock bass. We really changed pages here. Uh, Tom's been catching rock bass one after another, and I was getting the gills, but the boat must have shifted. I'll have to put us back on, so, uh, so he's catching the rock bass, and I'm catching the bluegills. <laughs> What do you got here, Justin? Another bluegill, Tom. All right. On the chino bait. One for the live well. Another one for the fish fry. Uh, if people at home want to try this chino bait, how do they find it? They can get that at www.southwaybaitsales.com or our phone number at 920-398-3791. I'm Justin Cohen. This is Tom Shire. Midwest Outdoors, we'll be right back. Hey folks, Mike Iconelli here. I want you to check out the April issue of Midwest Outdoors. Big article on me in there, and you know what? You're gonna find out stuff about me and fishing that I didn't even know. Hey, there's obviously a lot of factors that determine how many fish you can put in the boat. Weather would be one of them. Obviously, we've got weather today. Then you've got the seasonality, timing of your fishing, and then water conditions. We're going to talk about each of those today. Hi, I'm Larry Ladowski. I'm up in the north woods of Wisconsin. I'm fishing with John Andrew of Angler's Choice Guide Service. The guys a wealth of knowledge about all these factors and all the lakes up here. We're gonna talk, we're gonna pick his brain, and we're gonna catch some bass, right, John? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's go fishing. Geez, you just put that in the water and wham, this thing hit it. Just inhaled it. Whoa, oh, man. Way to go, John. In our lake is very clear water. Too much color's bad in clear lakes. What we want is color because our sky is real dark today, you can see all the folks at home can see the drizzle and mm -hmm. you know we're getting wet and but too much color is bad. Now the chartreuse in this water almost blends a little because we have such a vivid amount of bloom in the water. Even though it's clear water, we can see down eight, nine feet. The water is kind of greenish colored right now and the trees have just popped with leaves just in the last four days. So thinking that green is a good color in times that it is, right now we want to contrast. Uh -huh. So the bright color stands out more than almost anything else. I tell you, the minute he switched, that fish was on it. <laughs> nice job. It was good. Oof. Oofka. Woo. She's got a little fight to her. There we go. Oh, swam right in there, there. yeah. <laughs> oh, now that, that's, that's really, wow. that's what we're here for. That is awesome. Yeah, take your hand off. <sighs> wow, look at that fish. <laughs> that's a trophy. That's a trophy. So when you're fishing cold front conditions, you want to downsize your bait little slower presentation and it's all correct and then what you do you need to incorporate the fact of where you're fishing is it a dark water lake is it that tea color or is it a clear water lake in this case we went to small bait bright color which has triggered some really big fish 
and we're going to continue that throughout the day. Now, if I was on a coffee or a tea-colored lake in the same conditions, I may go to a smaller spinner bait, not a big one. That's why it's really cool to go out with a guide because, I mean, you fish an awful lot of water, John. I mean, what, four different counties that you yeah, go into? Yeah, I go into? from the Wolf River all in Wisconsin all the way up to Schwamigan Bay in Lake Superior, up to Washburn. And then how many days a year? I guide approximately 175 days a year from the beginning of May to Thanksgiving. So you're on fish every single day, and that's the important thing about hiring a guide. When you go on vacation, you have five days, four days, maybe sometimes three days to catch fish. One of those days, if not two, call a guide up, take them out, you'll learn how to acclimate the baits, you know, what's happening on the waters, um, how to fish them, and then you can go out with the rest of your vacation and enjoy it. It's true, and, and you know, it's not just muskies or walleyes a guide can help you with. You know, I, I'm a multi-species guide. I guide for, for crappies, jumbo perch, bluegills. I work with grandparents, couples, families, children. Uh, you go on my website, uh, theanglerschoiceguideservice.com, and you're gonna see over 400 pictures of my happy, smiling customers. He's hot, he's hot. Oh, you need that? Uh, let me try by hand. Nice. That's a good fish, eh? I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these are quality fish. Oh yeah. And again, just a little bright hook. Just a little. Little bright hook seems to make the difference on a on today. Anytime we can produce a quality fish like that. Yep. Now when you're you're talking clear lakes, usually you, you say longer casts, you don't spook the fish. How far of the shoreline will you work? Probably about two-thirds of the way back to the boat. Okay. Because it's clear water, we can visually see the strike. Mm -hmm. uh, there's times when the boat's in shallow water that you'll catch fish right under your boat because the fish will acclimate to your boat and they will use your boat as cover. Obviously, we got some on, the, on, their, uh, on their beds and we don't want to molest them on their beds. I mean, if we catch them off a bed, we want to get the fish right back to that bed. Mm -hmm. Even if we drift 80, 100 feet away while we land the fish, we want to take the trolling motor, we want to move the boat right to the bed and release the fish there. Now we see two different things here today. One is there's a couple of beds, they're just starting. And two, let's cast some of the deeper shorelines a short distance away that are connected to the shallow bays. I wanna thank John for having me out today. I learned a tremendous amount. I hope you guys did too. The guy fishes for a ton of species. How do people get a hold of you, John? Uh, you know, you can call me at 715-892-3020. Or uh, check out your website. My website, the anglerschoiceguideservice.com but you have to type in the word the or you'll get onto other websites. All right, the anglerschoiceguideservice.com or give them a call. If you want, come on up here to the Northwoods. It's beautiful country and a lot of fish, a lot of lakes to fish as well. This guy knows them like the back of his hand. I'm Larry Ladowski from Midwest Outdoors. We'll catch you later. Looking for your window to the outdoors? We have you covered with a Midwest Outdoors magazine subscription. Call now, 1-800-606-FISH, and for the low price of only $14.95, you receive 12 big issues of Midwest Outdoors magazine. Every month, Midwest Outdoors sends you the ultimate fishing and hunting guide to the outdoors. Call 1-800-606-FISH, or visit MidwestOutdoors.com to get your ultimate guide to the outdoors. If you don't have one, you need one. Feels like a little better one. That didn't take long. No. Staying down under the boat. All right, way to start, Mark. On the bobber. It's fun bobber fishing up on top of these reefs because they're so feisty. That's a great way to get started, folks. This is Mark Arneson, I'm Roger Cormier, Midwest Outdoors. We're at Arneson's Rocky Point Resort, Minnesota's Lake of the Woods. In today's segment, we're doing one of my favorite things, bobber, fish, and walleyes. We're on the shallow reefs, just a few miles out from the resort. We're gonna show you how we're catching these walleyes, how we're rigging for them, and hopefully put a few more nice ones in the box. Yeah, let's go fishing. Let's get back in. You can see here on the hummingbird how our initial anchor position is here. 
and we've been repositioning without moving the anchor just by changing our, our cleat position or changing the way the motor's been turned, letting out more rope, pulling in some rope, and we fished all over the top of the flat here. The wind is starting to lay down a little bit. Typically, the shallowest parts of the reef will be most productive in low light uh, in really windy days. So we're going to pull up and then slide into some deeper water, see if we can catch some more fish. This is a nice fish. It's yeah. tugging. You see, Mark's got a nine-foot rod. The advantage of using a super long rod when you're bobber fishing is it picks up your slack real quick. Not only a fast gear ratio like that Shimano Stratic's got a 6-1 gear ratio, every crank of the reel, the handle is six revolutions. Picks the line up fast, but then when he does a big sweep with that 9-foot rod, that picks all the slack up off the water, allows a real sure hook set. So always use the long, most long rod that you're comfortable with when you're bobber fishing. Big one. Well, in Lake of the Woods, we got a slot to help protect the fishery. It's 19 and a half to 28 inches is immediate release. You know, take a picture, throw it back. You can keep one over 28 for a trophy in the wall. Most people just release them and get graphites made and then keep the stuff under 19 and a half to eat. Yeah, this one's gonna be just a little bit too big. See, Mark's just using a real subtle color there. Just a, it's a, I don't know, a dark, dark purple with a yellow eye. And that's the result right there, real nice. It just went down, Mark. Reel up my slack and set the hook. I've got eight pound suffix elite on my main line. And I'll show you how we got these, these bobbers rigged up as far as the business end here as soon as we get this fish in. Swimming up current, look at them go. Running the other way. Just a, another slot, I think, yeah, nice that'll eye. work. Perfect eater. You get them all different size up here. That's one of the fun things about coming to Lake of the Woods is, you know, Mark talked about the slots, but you know, you can catch a few to eat for sure. Always get some fish to bring home from your vacation. And you get some bigger ones to take pictures of and let go. Here's a leech that he ate and, boy, he gobbled that, Mark. I mean, he hit it right down. He would bleed a little bit, but that's all right because we're going to have him for dinner in the Rock Harbor Lodge tonight. So coming down from my main line, I've got that bobber stop in line. We're set about 11 feet there. I got a little bead for a cushion, a little float, another bead for a cushion, and then there's a little split shot on here right above a swivel. This keeps my line from twisting, but also balances the float. That little extra bit of weight in conjunction with, here's a 10 pound suffix fluorocarbon leader, invisible to the fish, and then a little jig on the business end tipped with either a leech or a night crawler. But that split shot in line in conjunction with the weight of that jig, it pulls it right down so the bobber is neutrally buoyant in the water. And you, there's no resistance when the fish bites. I'm gonna tell you about the little adjustment we did to our bobber presentation here in just a second. This method of bobber fishing is a lot more precise than throwing out the anchor, making casts, and allowing your bobber to drift with the current. What we're doing here is integrating our presentation, our actual bobber cast, with what we're seeing on the electronics. We're not anchoring up. Either Mark or myself is driving the skeeter. We're following the, the brake line. Uh, right now we're marking a lot of fish in 20 to 24 feet. The cone angle is seeing about two and a half feet of bottom. My transducer is on uh, the starboard side of the transom. So I know that when we go over a fish and see that, that fish marked on the hummingbird, we know that that fish is within two and a half feet of my transom right below there. So the, what we do, when we mark that fish, is as simple as dropping the bobber right there and putting it in free spool. Doesn't always work. The variable is the wind and how you position the boat, but when you land on them, I mean, they bite it right away. That slip knot hits the bobber and the bobber goes down. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be the biggest one of the day so far. Yeah, another big one right there, man. Wow. Well, Mark and I hope you enjoyed today's segment on bobber fishing walleyes. Maybe you picked up a few tidbits for your own walleye bobber fishing. Remember, it's a great technique when walleyes are shallow on windy days or in low light conditions or during the day when those fish are a little more sluggish and deep. You can catch those neutral and negative walleyes with a bobber presentation. If you want to come up to Minnesota's Lake of the Woods, a great place to stay is Arneson's Rocky Point Resort. Mark, how do folks reach you if they want to come on up here? Well, they can give us a call at 1-800-535-7585 or look us up on the web. 
Arnison's.com. Folks, I'm Roger Cormier, and this is Mark Arneson. We'll be right back with more Midwest Outdoors. For all you kayak anglers out there, you know that anchoring your kayak can be a bit of a pain sometimes. You, you're using a stakeout pole or you're using a traditional anchor. anchor. Well, I have a solution for you, the PowerPole Micro. This thing is awesome. With the touch of a button, you're going to stop your boat in position, be able to grab your, ca your rod and make that cast, which means you get more fishing time. The PowerPole Micro, it's an awesome accessory. For more information on it, check out PowerPole.com. My name is Morgan Promnitz, and that's your Midwest Outdoors Tip of the Week. Hey folks, Mike Iaconelli here. I want you to check out the April issue of Midwest Outdoors. Big article on me in there, and you know what? You're going to find out stuff about me and fishing that I didn't even know. See you soon.